All right, let's kick this around with former White House press secretary and Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer. So Ari, critics of the uh, Colorado Supreme Court say this is democratically appointed judges usurping the will of voters. What do you say? Well, I say the critics are right. You know, the analogy I use, John, this, this kind of is like the flu. And I hope <laughs> no other state catches the Colorado flu. It's really not good for the health of the country. And that's the problem with the flu. It affects liberals. And there are liberals in other states, New York, California, you name it, they want to get it into red states as well. And what it really shows is who is it who's afraid of democracy? Who is afraid that they're going to lose to Donald Trump if you leave it up to the people? So they resort to extra legal procedures to do this. And John is just dangerous. It's dangerous because, as we saw with the two impeachments against Donald Trump, Republicans then copy what the Democrats have done. If you break the norm, mm. the other side will break the norm. What's to stop a red state from trying to do the same thing to a future Democratic candidate over some hyped up, gone too far allegation? That's where these things always go. In fact, the lieutenant governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, who'll be in the program later, is saying, well, Joe Biden's let all these illegal immigrants in affecting Texas. Maybe we should kick right. him off the ballot as well. This is all under the heading of the 14th Amendment, which states the following. No person shall hold any office, civil or military, under the United States who, having previously taken an oath as an officer of the United States to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. That was written back in Civil War times when it, there was a concern that, uh, you know, powerful figures in the Confederacy would rise to power again. H how is that in any way applicable to 2023 or even January the 6th? Well, it certainly isn't. Now, because it is in the Constitution, it does have legs. Just because mm -hmm. it was written a long time ago doesn't mean there could be a circumstance where today it is valid. But in order for it to be valid, you would think a court would have convicted Donald Trump of insurrection. You would think that the prosecutor appointed by the Biden Department of Justice would have included that in his charges against Donald Trump. He did not. There is no legal allegation against Donald Trump for insurrection, let alone a conviction. So what kind of freelancing is this by the Democratic court in Colorado? And, you, John, you just know how extreme this is because every Republican, even anti-Trump Republicans, are denouncing it, and very few Democrats are relishing it. It's just the liberal activists who want to spread it to those other states who are. It's a slice of the Democratic Party, and it's a dangerous slice for the Democratic Party because it makes them look all extreme. You know, there's evidence that this could backfire on Democrats in Colorado. Wall Street right. Journal editorial says the following. Trump versus the Banana Republic of Colorado. The effort to remove him from the ballot is legally baseless and helps his campaign. Latest numbers, New Fox Business Poll of Iowa. Donald Trump, 52%. That is up from 46 percent in September. And when asked if they are certain to support a candidate or may change their mind, 83 percent say they are certain to vote for Donald Trump compared to 59 percent for DeSantis and 51 percent for Haley. Could this, in effect, already backfire and help Donald Trump? Everything they've done so far for using the legal system has backfired, hasn't it? It's just fortified Donald Trump in the primary. You know, in Senate and governor races, the Democrats did their best to get Republicans to nominate the most Trumpy candidate out there. They intervened and spent advertising money to help the Trumpiest candidate. They're doing it again to get the Trumpiest candidate, Donald Trump, onto the ballot in this upcoming election. And, and, and that's why it's always backfired against the Democrats. And you would think by now they'd have wisened to the fact that this has backfired. They shouldn't do it. And if they're confident, just beat the man. Take it to the people. Let the people decide. But all of this shows to me, John, that they're not confident, that they believe the polls are showing that Joe Biden will lose to Donald Trump. They're resorting to this. And that's why, again, I'll come full circle. It wouldn't surprise me the consequence of all of this is Joe Biden is the one who gets removed by the, from the ballot at the Democratic convention, because after throwing all this stuff at Trump and without it sticking, they're probably going to have to remove Joe Biden if they have any hope to win. You know, as we close out 2023, looking ahead to a 2024 that is going to be very, very intriguing. All right, great to see you. Hope you have a great holiday. Thank you, John. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.